Dear friends, have you ever caught yourself in a position where you started asking yourself, why do I need to do what is right? What is even the point? When everyone else around me is going to this direction, why do I need to go the opposite direction? With these words, I welcome you to today's episode of the Liturgy of the World with Father Evaristus Egemeyo Abu. Today is Tuesday, the 13th day of June, 2023. It is Tuesday of the 10th week in Ordinary Time. Today also is the memorial of St. Anthony of Padua, a priest and a doctor of the church. We pray for the intercession of St. Anthony of Padua upon us. We pray for all those who go by the name Anthony. We ask God Almighty to bless them, that they will emulate their patron saint, St. Anthony of Padua. The life of St. Anthony of Padua is such an inspirational one, one that is worthy of emulation. Go and read it up. Go type it on Google, St. Anthony of Padua. Find out about St. Anthony of Padua. Try to emulate his virtues. Try to live out that call that you always hear deep within you. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Father in heaven, as we study your word today, we beg you to grant us the grace to understand what we read, to believe what we understand, and to practice what we preach. Help us to let our light shine. Help us to live out our call as the salt of the earth. May we influence others for good. May those who come our way never be scandalized. Rather, they will go with joy and happiness. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first reading today is taken from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 18 to 22. Our responsorial psalm comes from Psalm 119, while our gospel passage today is taken from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. The first reading, a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, as surely as God is faithful... Our word to you has not been yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, whom we preached among you, Silvanus and Timothy and I, was not yes and no, but in him it is always yes. For all the promises of God find their yes in him. That is why we utter the Amen through him, to the glory of God. But it is God who establishes us with you in Christ, and has commissioned us. He has put his seal upon us, and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let your face shine upon us. Lord, let your face shine forth on your servants. Lord, let your face shine on your servants. Your decrees are wonderful indeed. Therefore, my soul obeys them. Lord, let your face shine on your servant. The unfolding of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. Lord, let your face shine forth on your servant. 
I have opened my mouth and I sigh, for I yearn for your commands. Lord, let your face shine forth on your servant. Turn and have mercy on me, as is your rule for those who love your name. Lord, let your face shine forth on your servant. Let my steps be guided by your promise. May evil never rule me. Lord, let your face shine forth on your servant. Let your face shine forth on your servant and teach me your decrees. Lord, let your face shine forth on your servant. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trodden underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a stand and it gives light to all in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus, honor to Mary and Joseph. In today's gospel passage, Jesus describes his followers as the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Jesus is quick to add that if we, his listeners, his followers, fail to live up to these qualities as salt of the earth and light of the world, We are simply good for nothing. What is the point in being a Christian if you are not the salt of the earth? What is the point in being a follower of Christ if you are not a light for others to follow? Jesus says, if salt has lost its taste, it is trampled underfoot by men. If light no longer shines... It cannot be called light anymore. When, for instance, there is electricity and you turn on the switch only for your light bulb to remain switched off, what do you do? You replace it. You remove that bulb. You throw it away and you get another light. It's a great contradiction today that many of us refer to ourselves as Christians and yet we are not living up to our calling as salt of the earth or as light of the world. Our readings today call for an examination of conscience. Am I the reason why others are happy when I come into a a place, when I come into a group, when I come into a society, do I 
exert any positive influence. On the other hand, is it the case that many persons are scandalized because of me? Is it the case that some persons have stopped going to church because they realize that I am not what I claim to be? Is it the case that once I step into a group or a gathering, people begin to get up to leave because they know that my presence makes life tough for them? You see, salt does two things. Salt preserves. It also sweetens. As salt of the earth, we are called to preserve moral values. We are called to promote the culture of love. But when we fail to do this, it means that we have lost our tastes. We have lost our ability to shine. The light gives, you know, makes things bright. As a light of the world, I am called to be an example for others to follow. It's not just a matter of preaching it. It's, more importantly, living it out. And as light of the world, you cannot be hidden. That is what Jesus Christ tells us. He says, we, as, as a light of the world, you are a city built on a hill. Every Christian is a city built on a hill. The meaning of this is that there is no hiding place for us. There is no hiding place for you as a Christian, as a child of God. Whether people are watching you or not, you must continue to shine. You know, the beautiful thing about the light is that if, for instance, I walk out of this room, as long as I forgot to switch off the, 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 light, the light switch, as long as I forgot to switch it off, this light will shine. Whether or not I am here, the light does not consider, oh, are people in the room? So long as there is electricity, the light continues to shine. Its, it, it, it's shining does not depend on the presence of people. Child of God, there is no hiding place for you. Whatever you do, whatever you refuse to do, <laughs> Whatever you say or you refuse to say, as the, as the popular saying goes, can be used against you. So whether you talk, it will be used against you. If you don't talk, it will be used against you. So you just need to shine. As a Christian, you cannot afford to be living a double standard. You cannot afford to be uh, a saint in public only to become a demon in private. There's nothing like that. And Jesus Christ would even tell us that there is nothing secret that would not eventually be exposed. There is nothing in this world that is hidden. The truth will always come out, whether we like it or not. So, even if you've been falsely accused of something that you are innocent of, the truth will come out. The truth will surely come out. And then it will be clear to everyone. Just be good. Be good. Even when everyone around you is going the opposite direction, continue to let your light shine. Continue to be good. According to Marine Williamson, he said, our deepest fear 
is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are adequate. That is, we are talented beyond measure. He says, it is not our light that frightens us. I mean, it is not our darkness that frightens us. It is our light. We are scared of shining. We are scared of letting the world know what God has deposited in us. We are scared of showing our talent. We are scared of being good. We just want to go with the flow. He said, you are a child of God. As a child of God, you are meant to shine. You are meant to show the world how to live. You are meant to give the world good example. That is why you call yourself a Christian. You cannot afford to go with the flow. You cannot afford to just be like the rest of men. God did not give you a spirit of timidity. Remember, Jesus Christ says that even though we live in the world, we do not belong to this world. The world should copy from us, not we copying from the world. The world should take example, they should take cues from us, not we taking from the world. We are not trying to blend with the world. Rather, the world should blend with us because we are the light. And you may wonder, how is this possible? When everyone around me is going this direction, why do I need to go to the opposite direction? Consider the quantity of salt needed to make an entire pot of soup sweet. Consider the size of the light bulb in comparison with the size of the entire room. And you will discover that you, just one, just one person, you alone are enough. One person is enough to change the world. One person is enough to change the culture. One person is enough to transform this entire world. Why not be that person? Why not be the salt? Why not be the light? Why not be the reason why people will turn away from their darkness? Why not be the reason why people will be happy? Why people will want to do what is right? You see, when we let our light shine, we give the world reasons to praise God. The world is always looking for models. We are looking for models. We are looking for celebrities. Unfortunately, the celebrities we have are celebrities who are turning the world upside down. Our musicians, our actors, these are our celebrities. They make us happy. They make us smile. They are acting as the salt of the earth because of their movies, because of their music, because of the things they do. They make us happy, but at the same time, they are turning us away from the standards of God. Look at the life of our celebrities. How many of them can we pinpoint as light in our world? What kind of light are they emanating? Are they making us to know God better? Or with their music, with their movies, are they introducing immoral values in our world? Making us believe that money is everything. You see, you too, you can become a celebrity. But let it be that your celebrity, you are, you, 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 your, 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 the world will celebrate you not because you dress naked on the, on, on the stage and you are singing and you are dancing, but because you stand for what is right. Be a celebrity for God. Be a light for God. Be the one that will still make people laugh and at the same time take their mind to God, not away from God. St. Paul tells us in our first reading today, 
as a light of the world, there can be no yes and no in us. It is yes for God. Yes for God and for God alone. You cannot say yes for God and at the same time, yes to the devil. Don't be that person who will condemn our corrupt politicians in public only to go privately and receive your share of the loot. Don't be that person who is fighting, who claims to be fighting for justice and fairness, justice and fairness, yet your workers, you are owing them for many days and for many months. Don't be the angel in public only to become the demon in private. May God bless his words in our hearts. May God give us the grace to live up to our calling as salt of the earth and light of the world. Just as St. Anthony was a salt of the earth and a light of the world, and because of St. Anthony of Padua, many persons came closer to God. It is our prayer that we, we by, 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 by the way we live our lives, many persons will be inspired to draw closer to God. That is our prayer to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen. <music>